Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Jeff, AKA Beard Nation. And today we're gonna discuss the new DLSS settings that were added into Warzone. So everyone's hyped up about the new updates to the map, the new points of interest, the new weapons that were added. But the thing that I'm hyped about, I'm hyped about DLSS. As you guys know, I'm a complete sucker for frames. I wanna get better performance out of the game. Warzone itself is not necessarily the best optimized game. So when Nvidia added their DLSS settings to this, I'm completely stoked and we're gonna go over everything that's related to DLSS today. We're gonna go over how it compares to anti-aliasing, what kind of frames you're gonna get at 1440p and 4K, so let's go. So you guys might be wondering, what is deep learning super sampling and, and what does it do? So it's an NVIDIA technology. It's based specifically on the RTX cards. So if you guys don't have an RTX graphics card, you guys can go check out some of my other Warzone videos. Uh, I am really apologize, but this is really specifically for RTX cards. Um, and what it is, it's called deep learning super sampling. And what it does, it uses the power of AI to increase frame performance for graphically intensive images. So basically you're gonna get more frames and you're not gonna take a huge hit in resolution. So how does DLSS work? I think I can explain it fairly well, but I'm gonna read it right from the lion's mouth here. I, I want you guys to get a full understanding of what this is, how this technology works. This is some crazy stuff. And you know what, like when we go later into the testing, when I went to the gameplay and I had different results, both for 1440p and 4K, like the results were pretty astounding and the quality was great. So here's how it works. The DLSS team first extracts many aliased frames from the target game. And then we, for each one, we generate a matching perfect frame using both super sampling or accumulation rendering. These paired with frames are fed to NVIDIA's supercomputer. The supercomputer trains the DLSS model to recognize the alias inputs and generate high quality anti-alias images that match the perfect frame as closely as possible. We then repeat the process, but this time we train the model to generate additional pixels rather than apply AA, anti-aliasing. This has the effect increase the resolution of the input. Combining both techniques enables the GPU to render the full monitor resolution at higher frames per second. So in a nutshell, layman's terms here, this is taking a lower quality image using their AI to increase the actual perceived quality of that image and put it at a higher frame rate. So when you're doing this at 1440p, this might not be apples to apples, but they're basically taking a 1080 image that's gonna perform at a higher frame rate and they're super sampling it up to make it look like a 1440p image and perform at a 1080 rate. So you're getting best of both worlds here. Yes, there's a couple trade-offs and we'll discuss that later in the video, but you know what? Overall, that performance increase, at least for me, has been incredible. So who benefits the most from DLSS and what is the actual application where you'd want to use this? Uh, you want to use this in the case where your GPU is at its maximum capacity. If it's at the place where it's running at full capacity without any bottlenecks or anything else such as that, that is when you want to apply DLSS. You don't want this in a situation where you're running at 1080p and you have a lot of room on your graphics card. This is designed for higher resolutions, 1440p and 4K specifically. You want to be in the case when you're completely maxing out your GPU. I'm currently running on a 3070 with a fairly decent CPU. And you know what? I still hit that 97, 98%. So this is something that I benefit from where I want to push my frame rate, let's say from 120 to 140 or 140 to 160, depending on the certain graphical settings I have within Warzone. If you're not maximizing your GPU, DLSS is not a setting that you want to turn on. And to build off the reason why you don't want to have this at 1080 is that you're going to get some blurry frames. It's taking a lower quality image and it's upscaling it. So if you're running at 1080p already, that's your maximum image. It's going to downscale that even further. And honestly, the the results aren't worth the frames and it's something that is meant for higher resolutions 1440p slash 2k or 4k so what's the difference between dlss and anti-aliasing and why is anti-aliasing turned off when you turn on dlss is there any differences um, as you may know if you turn up the settings within anti-aliasing for warzone yes you're going to get technically less jagged image quality but you're going to be suffering at the point where it's a little bit either hazy or blurry or fuzzy it's not really the same that's why you turn on some of that grain and the filmic grain but honestly dlss is not a perfect replacement for anti-aliasing and obviously it's not as gpu intensive it doesn't lower your frames it raises them but in a sense it's using the neural network or the, the ai within nvidia's technology that's going to help not only kind of recreate a higher anti-aliasing setting but it's also going to give you the performance that lower anti-aliasing does. And it's kind of crazy how this works. Um, I, I can't really get too much into the science behind it because I'm not super familiar, but I know from my testing that the image quality on the certain settings that we're going to show later in the video, uh, I found that it's almost as good as the highest anti-aliasing setting, even with some NVIDIA filters on to help sharpen things up, but we're getting much better performance. Like 
crazy better performance compared to what I have without those filters on and without any of the DLSS settings on. So let's take a look at the different settings that are available. <clears throat> so within NVIDIA DLSS, you can find it under the post processing effects. It's at the bottom of your graphics settings on PC. And there's a few different options. Obviously we have it disabled. And when you do disable it, it's gonna allow you to change your anti-aliasing, but if you do have it on, it automatically blocks it. So it's overriding your anti-aliasing setting. It's running on its own. It's going through NVIDIA's RTX technology through their AI, and it's allowing to do the sampling and the rendering of the image on their end. So there's four different settings that, so there's four different settings when you turn it on. There's ultra performance, performance, balanced, and quality. So when you have these here, they're going from highest to lowest. So in theory, you would get the most frames out of ultra performance and the least frames out of quality. But there are some trade-offs here and that you're gonna have lesser image quality. So the reason that this is recommended for 8K gameplay is that the image quality is taking such a hit that you want a high quality image to start with because it's gonna take that high quality image, it's gonna downsample it, and then it's gonna run through the network and that allows you to refresh the frames at a better rate. So if you don't have an 8K setup, which I think most of us don't, or even a 4K setup. I mean, even with my 3070, I'm getting some decent performance at 4K, but I'm in no means running Warzone at 4K with my 3070. But testing all of this, you can see the trade-offs. And we'll talk about that when we get into the actual test itself. But quality is gonna give you the best image, but it's gonna give you the lowest frame jump. But still, the results are astounding. This is nothing to be deterred from. Um, I've even tried balance, had different settings. I mean, I've jumped back and forth between balance and quality. Even at 4K, I ran performance and had some different tests. It's really up to you guys to see what you prefer and how many frames you wanna jump up at the trade-off of a little bit lower quality image. It's almost in a sense, slightly blurry compared to when you have anti-aliasing off and it's really jagged and like shimmering. I honestly prefer the image on quality DLSS with a little bit more blurriness, especially at farther distances, than I do with all the crazy noise of the jagged edges. I find it's easier to spot enemies, it's easier to see my overall background and my settings, and honestly that's my preference so far, and I'm still doing some testing, but that's where I really landed. So jumping into the testing itself, I went in on two different games, I tested first at 1440p, then I tested at 4K. I did the same similar test. I did get poached by some idiots just running around and trying to shoot me. Like I thought I was out in the middle of nowhere, but I think everyone's exploring the, the far corners of the map right now with all the updates, but no big deal. I did the same similar test for a couple of options. What I did, I did DLSS off with anti-aliasing off. I did DLSS off with anti-aliasing at the max. And then I went through the quality, balance, and performance modes for all the different DLSS options. I'll show the data at the end and the results, but I wanna give you guys a quick 45 second example. What I did is I used a tool and I used 45 second tests and I did the same motion, doing actions, jumping, running, turning around, shooting, looking at the different things, just to make sure I was getting a better example versus just sitting there and having my frames stagnant. Cause as you know, if you're moving around in your different areas of Warzone, your frames are gonna adjust. So here's an example of the test. Pretty simple, just went ahead, turned on the option, and I went and ran around in the back corners of Verdansk. So nothing like super crazy. Just seeing how some of the objects looked in the distance, how things were rendering. As you can see here with anti-aliasing off, everything's like shimmery and kind of jagged and sort of weird looking, but you're getting good frame performance with anti-aliasing off, it's, so it's the trade-off. And, and that's the best thing about DLSS is it's gonna be sort of the best of both worlds. Yeah, so that's it. I went ahead and did the exact same test as closely as possible, running around in the same circle, looking at different objects, sometimes shooting. And I think I had a pretty decent sample of results. I actually did it twice just to see if it was consistent and the results were fairly consistent. So let's take a look at them. So as you can see here, here's my results. And I thought they were pretty astounding. I mean, looking at the overall best performance for 1440p uh, in terms of frames, I found that the balance was the best. Uh, it wasn't by much, but if you look right here, you see balance, I had 159 frames average, whereas on quality, I had 152 frames average. Um, but one caveat, the image quality is gonna get impeded by this. I actually think that the quality setting has the best image quality, that's what I'm gonna run with. Even if I'm running NVIDIA filters, I'm still running quality. But looking at even anti-aliasing off, the performance was lower than DLSSS, but you weren't having that jagged edge, that shimmering effect. I mean, I kind of found that the little bit of blurriness that DLSS adds 
kind of gets rid of that really distracting shimmering feeling that you get when even when you're looking at long distances and you're trying to spot enemies when you're sniping i mean i thought it was a much better advantage and i think the frame rate jump is incredible and one thing i wanted to note that um according to the recommendations quality is the setting that's recommended for the best performance and that's what you should be using if you're using 2k um, even though the performance didn't necessarily equate to the best frames this is what i found now looking at 4k i thought this was pretty interesting again i'm running an rtx 3070 with the ryzen 7 5800x i really don't experience any bottlenecking from a cpu side i'm not maxing out my cpu but i am hitting 97 98 even 100 gpu usage during gameplay and looking at 4k this is 4k 60. i tested this on a non-gaming monitor but i do run 4k 60 on this monitor but i turned the frame limitations off i wanted to make sure i was actually getting the frames even though they weren't rendering on my screen i was able to see how many frames i would technically render if i was running a higher frame monitor and what i saw here was really really incredible like Looking at anti-aliasing off, I am just tapping at 106 frames. Yes, I'm running at like, these are full settings. Everything during this test was ran at full settings all the way up. I did not limitate anything. I'm only slightly overclocking my GPU and I was getting 106 frames. Now with the anti-aliasing all the way up, I was running about 84 frames. We jump into DLSS. Now that we have an upscaled image, technically a 4K image on performance should equate to the 1440p image at quality, at least from what I read on the settings. And you know what? I'm getting 125 frames per second at 4K. Like I'm getting above console. I mean, this is pretty incredible stuff. Like I think the DLSS technology is only going to continue to improve as time goes on. And for you RTX cards users out there, you need to give this a test out. If you have any questions, like drop them in the comment section below. I'm happy to work through it with you guys. It's all going to depend on your machine. Obviously your rig is the most important thing here. If you're running a, a 20 series card or a 10 series card, there might be something that you're adjusting here. You might not get the same performance in terms of percentage, but you know what? You are gonna get performance. And if you're really running this and you're optimizing it, you're working on your settings, you're gonna be able to get the competitive advantage when you're playing against other people who are at lower frame rates. So that wraps it up for today's video, guys. I really hope this was helpful. I hope I was able to provide some insight on what DLSS is what it's going to do for your game in Warzone, how it's going to improve your performance, some of the negative pros and cons that go along with DLSS. I don't think there's too many, but there certainly is some if you like your image quality. If you're a content creator, you're not necessarily somebody competing. Maybe DLSS is not for you. Uh, you can always shut this off and turn on your anti-aliasing. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get high quality game footage for YouTube or for other stuff like that, you might want to consider turning it off. But if you're really trying to get that competitive edge, trying to get high kill gameplays, trying to compete with other players, I really suggest turning on DLSS. It's going to give you a competitive advantage. You're going to get a significant boost in frame rate. And you're really going to enjoy it. I mean, I think this is an amazing addition. I know there's been other games that are similar to Warzone that have been utilizing this technology for quite some time. So I'm really happy that Activision was able to work with Nvidia and get this implemented into their game. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscription button, make sure you hit that like button, hit the notification bell. I'm looking forward to pumping out more great content for you guys. Until next time, peace.